Right guys, we're back. Today I'm doing engine stuff. We're gonna go to Anderson Racing, go pick up the cylinder head. It's another wonderful British day, which means absolutely crap weather. So we're gonna go jump in daily and we'll go pick up the cylinder head. And I'm gonna run you through the spec of the engine and how much power it's gonna make. I'll see you when we get there. You right guys, as you can see behind me is my engine. I'm gonna run you through a quick spec. Some people have been asking some more information on it. So this is a two litre stroker. It's fully built. I'll show you through and what parts I've got in it. So it's got a fully built SuperTech head. That's springs, titanium retainers, stainless inlet valves, in-canal exhaust valves. Um, this is a large port AGU head. It was originally a BAM in there, so it was small port, it's now large port. I've got a large port standard inlet manifold coming from Mr. Speedline. You'll see a quick video of his T4 here, it's absolutely mad. So gonna run that standard OEM large port inlet. I've seen it over 500 horsepower, so that's gonna be plenty for this build. In the future, if I see a specific brand one come up, I will nab it and we'll get it put on. Um, so the block itself is a two litre stroker. So all the bores have been bored up to 83 mil with CP pistons. It's got IE rods. It's got a two litre TFSI crank. That basically gives you a longer stroke. So with the bigger bore and the longer stroke, that ups it from a little 1.8 to a two litre now. So it should make more torque and spool the turbo faster. So it should make it interesting. Now, what this has also got on it, this crank pulley here, you can see this isn't standard crank pulley. And obviously I've got ARP bolt hole on it. This crank pulley is made by Pro Race Engineering. They're a UK firm um, that make a lot of parts for 1.8 turbos. They sell a lot of bits as well as making their own. Um, so this is a billet crank gear. It's also press fit. So to fit it, I actually froze the end of the crank slightly with some free spray and I just had this sat in the radio in the house, brought out and just tapped it on gently with a soft hammer. I used the trusty Thor's hammer there and use the raw hide end so I didn't mark it. Um, so it did tap on quite snugly so that's quite tight. It's also got more surface area on it and then with the ARP bolt on that's got Loctite on it. I don't see that going anywhere because some people have had it issues and the last thing we want is the timing changing because that will kill this engine so holding this all together i've got arp everything main studs rod bolts head stud kit crank bolt cam bolt all arp so don't want anything coming undone Right, so I'm just going to be talking up the last stage, which on these ARP bolts is 80 foot pounds. I'm actually making sure I do it correct. I've got 
torque setting and the pattern it's quite a simple pattern but i've got in front of me just in case just makes everything easier we do 80 foot pounds it is a m10 spline also to help the engine i've got this this is a fluid damper so basically it's a crank damper but just a better one i've got it here out the box which i'll just grab and i'll show you so you can see it there i got this from pro race engineering just like quite a few of the bits i got from pro race or from badger 5. this it does cost a bit of money but it's just an extra safety for the engine and this literally got the bolts and it just bolts on like so obviously it's not bolted on yet i've got brand new oem bolts to put on it and that helps with vibrations and the and harmonics of the engine a four cylinder inline actually makes quite a lot of harmonics so it is very useful for having one it's an extra couple hundred quid i'd definitely suggest it, especially a two litre stroker with that longer stroke it's going to cause more vibrations and harmonics it's actually just started snowing so as you i said i've got a fluid damper on it now it's, the engine's not timed up yet it's actually off of top dead center you can see my pen mark and white pen mark probably up there i use a dti gauge and set it with the sender head off you'll see that in the um time lapse that i've done so it's off of tdc because the cams are going to go in i don't want valves and pistons to touch i've got the cams like i said but i need to clean them first so timing this up, I'm actually going to be using a OEM belt. I've actually got one from VW. It's a Gates Power Grip belt. The standard black one, standard hydraulic tensioner and a brand a new water pump. I'm not going for the blue belt. It's Some people use it. It's needed sometimes, but I've seen lots of builds that over 500 horsepower don't use them. That's pretty much the rundown on this engine. If there's anything else you'd like to know, just comment below or send me an Instagram or message or something like that. And I'll give you the advice I know. If not, message Pro Race or Badger 5. They'll help you out. They both build engines and sell all the bits and will give you advice for what you need. Um, I've got a turbo inside that I got from Owen Developments. So I'll go grab that and I'll show you through it, talk you through it. Um, they've basically asked me what the spec the engine is and what i wanted it to do and they suggested what turbo i should run Right guys, so this is my turbo. It's an Owen Developments 6173. MI5 compressor cover with which has been ported anti-surge. It's got the red anodized blade and developments there, the little aerodynamic nut, which is a lovely touch. It's got a turbo speed sensor. That's what this is, that's just plugged in out of the way. My wastegate is a 0.62, so not massive. I want it nice and small so it spools up and it's coated white as you can see that's basically a ceramic heat coating it's instead of having a heat blanket so there isn't that problem to deal with this turbo is lovely it looks absolutely amazing it should make around well i just want it to make 500 a version of this which isn't quite the same not as fancy mainly I've seen do 540 horsepower, so we've definitely got some headroom. We won't be pushing it to limit. I don't want to push it to limit. I will show you if I can. Reference for size. It is pretty big. Some people have used bigger. Some people use smaller. 
it's going to be plenty for 500 horsepower. No, God, please, no, no! You right, guys, so that's it for this video. I've run you through the spec of the engine and showed you the bits and what has been done to it and what power it's going to be making. If you need any bits, Pro Race Engineering or Badge 5, they both build engines and sell parts for them. I'll put their link to their websites down below in the description. Please look them out, buy some bits, support UK businesses. That's what I've tried to do with this engine as much as I can. Hopefully I'll see you in the next episode and it will be stuff to do with Gearbox. Thanks for watching.